Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find probabilities for normally distributed data, and I'm going to be using Excel to find those values. So what we have here is that the monthly utility bills in a city are normally distributed with a mean of a 110, which is important. That's going to give us our mu. And a standard deviation of 13, that's going to give us our sigma that we need to know um, in order to calculate our values. Um, we're going to find the probability of three different situations um, of selecting a random or a randomly selected utility bill in the city is a less than 85. So that's the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for the probability that X is less than 85. Okay. Um, so if you think about this with the normal curve, what is happening here? is that our normal curve is centered at 110 and we're basically counting by 13s to go one standard deviation, two standard deviations. So 85 is going to be down here somewhere and we're looking for values to the left of that. Okay, so we know that our answer is not going to be a very large one because 85 is pretty far from the 110. Remember that we're using the standard deviation to count on our number line. Uh, so that's where how I ended up down there. You really don't have to know that in order to be able to find the answer because you can find the answer without the picture. But I always like to have the picture because it's a good practice to write it out. Uh, when you get into hypothesis testing, it is a requirement that you have the models drawn. So it's just a good practice to get into. All right, so let me grab Excel. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna select a cell in here and we're gonna start typing equals norm and I'm going to do the first one, the dot distribution. My X value is the value that I have here. So 85, since it's to the left, that's what Excel finds is the area to the left. Um, so for this one, what we're going to do is we are going to do equals normal distribution. X is less than 85, so I would do 85. Then I'm going to put in my mean, which is 110. My standard deviation, which is 13. And then I need to select whether it's true or false. True is the cumulative distribution function, where false is the probability typically called distribution function, um, but Excel calls it the probability mass function. That's just for one exact value. We don't want it to be just 85. We want it to be less than 85. So we're going to hit true for the cumulative. Okay, close your parentheses and hit enter and that would give you your value. The nice thing about using Excel is you can have it round it to however many decimal places you want. The default for probability is four. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease this down to four decimal places and that would be my answer. This is 0 0.0272. So the probability of selecting a utility bill that is less than $85 is approximately 0 0.0272 or 2.72 percent. All right, for the next one, we are looking for the probability of it being between 90 and 120. So the way that we would write that is 90 and we would put the X in between those two values. And then remember that 110 is our center point. Okay, so 90, since it's less than 13 below, it's less than one standard deviation below. And 120 is less than one standard deviation above. And so we're trying to find this area in between. So with Excel, when you're finding area in between, you have to do the area of the larger value minus the area of the smaller value. So we'll just use the same equals norm dot distribution. You're just going to have to enter it twice. Okay, so our first one, our larger value would be 120. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to change my X value of 85 to 120. And then I'm going to go to the end of my equation and I'm just going to do minus and I'm going to start typing the normal dot distribution again. And my X value is 90 this time. My mean is still 110. My standard deviation is still 13. And I still want true because what we're doing is we're subtracting out this unshaded region over here. So it's taking the area that goes all the way to 120 and it's subtracting out the area to the left of the 90. Okay, and then when I hit enter, 
it gives me my total area. Remember, I had already rounded it to four decimal places. So most of the time, like I said, the default is four decimal places. If you need more or less, you can always look for more. Whoops, I have to highlight on that cell. You can have more decimal places or less decimal places. But like I said, four is the default. All right, and then our last one that we are going to find in this video is more than 130. Okay, so for this one, what we are going to do is we are going to draw out our picture again to kind of give us a visual representation. It will be centered at 110. 130 is more than one standard deviation above. And so we're looking for this area more than is always to the right. Okay. Um, so for this one, when you use the normal dot distribution and the cumulative, it gives you the area to the left. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do one minus the area to the left. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to retype the formula this time. So I'm just going to select this and just hit delete to clear it out. And we'll just start over and we're going to do equals one minus the normal dot distribution. X in this case is going to be 130. The standard deviation is still 110. I mean, sorry, the mean is still 110. The standard deviation is still 13. And we still want that true. We want the cumulative distribution of everything from negative infinity up to 130. And we are subtracting it from one because we want the area to the right. Okay, and so when I hit enter, the 0 0.0620 would be my area. Okay, so using Excel does speed up the process over using the table because if you use the table, you would first have to convert all of these values to z-scores and then you would have to find the approximate z-score in the table and using the table is not going to be as accurate or precise as you have in Excel. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.